So, with World at War introducing players to zombies, it became a main staple in Black Ops 1. And I think I'm safe to say that this was most everyone's first zombie game they ever played. I'm saying this because Black Ops 1 was way more popular than World at War. And the fact that this mode isn't unlockable anymore. As for World at War, you had to play the campaign to unlock it. While for Black Ops 1, it almost kind of continued tradition, but yet, zombies was in front and center. And oh boy, when you go press on the menu, nobody was expecting this. I wish I could recreate my first time reacting to the main menu transitioning into zombies. Because holy crap, this is one of the best menu screens ever. As a kid, I thought I was going to get a letterbox menu. But no, the whole environment and menu changes. The TV screen shows zombies footage of a mixture from some of the scenes from the campaign. The interrogator slash Hudson switching to a zombie as he bangs on the window. But the most important thing we got is the first iconic zombies theme song. A song that will forever stay with Treyarch zombies and would stay with Zombies fans forever. Going into Zombies modes really creeped me out as a kid. It was like chaos through front and center, seeing the TV screen switch to more Zombies footage, the whole aesthetic of the menu is just out of this world. This is how you immerse the player. This is how you make Zombies terrifying. And also I was going to include this because in the main campaign menu you were able to get out of the chair, while in Zombies you can't. Forever stuck watching all of this go down. A massive nostalgia wave just hit me when clicking this menu again. And maybe it hit you too, bringing back the fond memories when zombies was starting to pick up the story and gameplay. So just like my War Out War video, we're going to be exploring every map in this game and what made them terrifying. Well, as a kid. But there was probably some other things that you may not have known as a kid. But I knew some of these things and they creeped me the hell out. So we have six main maps and we're going to start with the first one, Kino der Telten, the Theater of the Dead. One of the cult classic maps in Zombies, and just like with Nock, this was everyone's first map. So, let's get into it. I love how we got a speedy catch up in the loading screen, as we've seen the previous maps in the comic book style panels, and we get to see the main crew and what led them to Kino, as Tank Dempsey shot the Wonder Raffle when they were teleporting on the Duris teleporter, in which flung them to the future into this abandoned, decrepit theater. And we still got the iconic stuff, with the round beginning and changing, and the zombies are still the same, and the dogs are here too. But this theater, the way how it feels is eerie. It captures the feeling of an abandoned place, like a liminal space, as once you think about it, this theater was once the lively place, but now is long forgotten, tucked away in the corner. And this is just the first room, later on I'll show that this was no normal theater. And oh yeah, if you go to this corner, there's a little rock, a piece of Elemental 115. Oh, I found the rock! Great! I have no clue why, but I always like the old color, more than the new color. Because I think they changed it in Black Ops 2 in Origins and Forever changed it in BL3. Oh, and every character gets to comment about it once you interact with the rock. As a kid, I was always intrigued on why this rock was here. And due to that, it wanted me to become more aware of the ever-growing zombie storyline. And this map has a lot of environmental storytelling. But I'll get to that because I want to talk about some of the funny things that started on this map. Like with the main joke with the whole two wall buys, with the M14 and the Olympia. At which one you pick first. For me, I always picked up the M14. Though sorry for the Olympia fans. That gun is great, but I just think the M14 is just better. And also the infamous thing we did as a kid with the mystery box, as we tried to figure out what was the best ways to get the ray gun. Look, I will admit, I did this too, and you can admit too that you did this too. We all did these stupid steps on the way how to get the ray gun. Oh, you had to spin around, shoot the box eight times, knife it, and turn away, and somehow you'll get the ray gun. Man, we were all gullible as a kid. The mystery box was just a random chance. There was no way of getting a ray gun on these stupid steps. But let's get into the main creepy parts, because when you go back in the back of the theater where the power is, there's these capsules on the floor. And when you look into the little window, you see a dormant zombie in it. And if you look around the theater, you see that there's one open. So we can safe to say that this zombie started this outbreak. And also remember, this was the time we didn't know the zombies were being controlled. We thought there were just outbreaks with the element 115 causing them. But oh boy, we were wrong, because later in this game we will be revealed to that. And also, in one of the rooms behind the barrier, you can hear knocking. And I'll show it to you. So many theories spawned with this knocking, as I think I remember one of them said that it was Morse code or some sort of code that was being broadcasted with the knocking. Or there was another theory saying that this was a zombie stuck in the container or a survivor is stuck in there. 
A whole multitude of questions came from this knocking, and we still don't know what is causing it. Some say it's a zombie trying to get out of the box, because the box looks similar to the one that houses the capsules that have these zombies in them. But for me, I like to go with the other theory saying that the survivor's stuck in there. But back to the power room, because when you turn on the power, a new enemy spawns. At first, the Nova 6 crawlers were creepy as hell. The roar they make, how they break down the ceiling when you turn on the power, and the way the hell they crawl down the wall. And when you get to see them front and center, and their face is just a mouth with a full set of sharp teeth. I will admit, I was always scared of turning the power on this level, and it was thanks to these guys. And now today, I just see them as annoying little shits due to the cloud they leave when you kill them as it blinds you. But again, these guys were scary for the first time, and we're still not done with this map. There's more as when you use the teleport to go to Pack-a-Punch, and when you're done Pack-a-Punching, you get a teleport to these different rooms. One is Samantha's room, one is a corrupted version of it, and one is on the 5 map, which is the Pentagon. And another one is the Surgery Room, with the same noises from Bura, of where you hear the drills. But in these rooms, there are film reels, and they are filled with little bits of lore, as they have radio messages in them. But before I talk about them, I want to talk about the pictures they show, because some of them are unsettling. Like with one of them that shows a laboratory where on the table it spells out ear, as it flashes the letter for it. There's another one where the zombies coming out of the fog. And for the last one where it has an eye that spells out 935. But again, with all of these, they have radio messages on them. They vary from one of the ones you pick, but we're going to start with the first radio message. Oh, I forgot to mention. I'll have all these radios timestamped because I'm going to be using every radio from every map. So if you want to skip them, well, you get to see them on the timestamp. The test subjects have been undergoing treatment for five days with little progress. I have been assured that given time, the programming will take hold. So with the first reel, we get more confirmation that there was more tests with 115 and that Kino was one of these testing facilities. But I guess you can already guess that seeing the capsules in the back and seeing some of the Germans flag. But there's still two more radios in these reels. In the past weeks, we have made great strides in breaking through to their subconscious. I have had the projectionist make edits to the film. These changes have been very effective. Subject 26 has had a breakthrough. He is responding to the treatment and following basic instructions. The violent outbursts have been greatly reduced, and given time, we feel this method of treatment will be 100% effective in most cases. So yeah, with these three radio messages, or the real messages, it is confirmed that Kino is going to be a testing facility for 115, as it was their first time testing on the zombies, almost like a continuation of the Duris projects. But there are still two more radios, but they are very hidden, as one of them is on top of the Berlin Wall on the tower, and one is hanging off the theater chandelier. So I'm gonna play both of them. Our timeline for deployment can be accelerated, given the progress we have made in the past two weeks. If patient 26 can retain the impressions longer than 26 hours, we will have the process perfect. Another setback. Patient 26 was killed this morning in a field test. He lost control and attacked one of our handlers. His injuries were minor, but patient 26 was destroyed. The break in programming coincided with the flashing lights and loud noises of the fire alarm in the test facility. One moment. What is it? So with these two messages, it's just more confirmation that Kino was a testing facility and what Dr. Maxis did on these experiments and what Group 935 did too. And it seems like they had a lot of setbacks at first. And like I said with the other one, just like with the Duris project. I think in my opinion, all these radio messages elevated the creepiness factor into zombies because it made us think like, oh, what went wrong? And then how did all of these outbreaks happen? Also, another little weird thing that sometimes the zombies say Sam whenever they're trying to attack you. It was just weird for the first time. As later on, I will get to mention about Samantha Maxis. Before I get into that, I also forgot to mention one of the best wonder weapons ever in zombies history, the Thunder Gun. I always loved using this thing and getting it on this map. Back to the lore, because we get more extra bits of it when you play the game on solo. Oh well, Kino on solo. Entry 7410, Route Perhaps this station will hold the key to the real goals of Group 935. I still do not trust my unconventional allies, but they are of great use to me. But I digress. 
Who would have thought the MDT was capable of time travel? How many stations does this group have? Where did that little girl disappear to? Only time will tell what new questions await us in this theater of the damned. So with this, we get a mention of Samantha Maxis, or like what Rick Toffin said that it was a little girl and it seems she survived the Doris teleporter encounter, when Rick Toffin locked her and her father in the teleporter. And also too, we get a mention that Rick Toffin's not even part of Group 95, it seems like he was like a spy inside of it. Because the way he presents himself, that he's saying that he's not really part of the group, he's just investigating on what they're doing. With Samantha Maxis and of course the mysterious allegiance that Rick Toffin has as there's a different group now involved. Later on, we'll be answered to these questions as we keep exploring the later maps. But this whole mystery of Samantha Max has elevated the horror factor. Like it influenced so many theories about how is she alive, why is she doing this, and how is she connected to the zombies. To the whole thing. Because remember, the zombies say Sam whenever they try to hit you. Well, occasionally they say it. And remember back in the Doris easter egg? It seems that she might be the announcer as they have similar voices. And also too, in the same map, we get to see our room and we get to see the teddy bear as the teddy bear is connected to the box is that whenever you get the teddy bear, the box moves. This teddy bear is connected to Samantha, as it's hers. Also too, back with the box moving, even Rick Toffin mentions her name too. With all of this, it helped influence the story. As I look back on this, there was a lot of foreshadowing in the early days. It's later on, will be revealed to Samantha Maxis. Back in the day, I remember so many theories videos on Black Ops 1 Zombies, and it started with this map and the other map. To me it made that fun and it also kind of made it creepy too because there were so many theories going on. It just added on more to the mystery of this whole storyline. So just like with Nocturne Tilden, this map resonated with a lot of players as it was their first map they ever played and it was probably what helped introduce them to zombies. And it brings a lot of nostalgic memories of playing this map and is what led players to be more intrigued with the storyline as more videos were touching up on the lore and explaining it to us. Again, a simple map and a simple beginning. This helped grow more of the zombies community as it gave more attention to it. And the fact that Keenard the Tilton was free. It was just an easy access to just get into zombies. Even if you couldn't afford the DLCs, you could play this amazing map. But the thing is, there was another map too. And that map is called Five. Or Five, in order to unlock this map, you have to complete the campaign, or you can use the computer in the back of the starting room, in the back of the campaign menu to unlock it. So it kind of continues the tradition from War at War. Just for now, and remember, you had to finish the campaign to unlock Zombies mode. For Black Ops 1, we get two. We have another mode that's called Dead Ops Arcade, but that one's not as much as scary as like these maps, so I'm not going to mention it. I never started playing this map, the beginning part of the map, I never found it creepy. But later on, later into the later rooms, I did find it unsettling. I always found this map fun. It was due to the intro, as the intro is one of the funniest. If you want to skip it, I have a timestamp, but if you don't, you get to watch it. For time and the world, do not stand still. Change is the law of life. And those who look only to the past or the present are certain to miss the future. I said, are certain to miss the future. <laughs> oh no, I missed that. Prime Minister Castro, this missile crisis was the last straw. We almost blew ourselves up. Now we invited you here today. In good faith. In good faith. To sort this thing out. And why is he here? He lost. As I always say, forgive your enemies, but remember their names. Now, gentlemen, as I like to think, in the long history of the world, that there are only a few generations. Sounds like someone breaking in. It's just a storm, Dick. Sit down. Oh my god! It appears the Pentagon has been breached. Zombies. Gentlemen, at times like these, our capacity to retaliate must be and has to be massive to deter all forms of aggression. Gentlemen, lock and load. Viva la revolución! Any last words, Mr. President? Yes, Jack. Any superlative words of inspiration for our humble troops. Do not pray for easy lives, my friends. Pray to be stronger men. This intro is still meme to this day because of how iconic it is, as you get to play the most important leaders during the middle part of the Cold War. My favorites are either JFK or Castro. They are just too funny whenever with their quips and their dialogue. But enough of that, because we're gonna get back into the map. So the Pentagon has been overrun by zombies, which is a terrifying thought because the Pentagon is the most secure place on the earth. 
and now it's overrun by the undead. And as we go down further in the map, we can see the reason why it got overrun. As when you go to the elevator and go down to the lab, it's filled with blood, and the whole place is on high alert. The lab part of this map always creeped me out, because there was a bloodbath that happened down here. And the zombies we were killing are the people who got churned. Because on this map, they have different outfits, and their appearance are different. There are office workers, scientists, and military police. Unlike with Kino and the older maps, they were just fallen soldiers, but this time, these were people that actually recently got churned. The whole thought of it is just really messed up. So as we explore the labs, we get more of a visual telling of the lore. As in one of the rooms, they were experimenting and reverse engineering some of the wonder weapons back from Germany. Behind this barrier, as you can see the ray gun. I know the ray gun was created by the division in Shinonuma, but it's kind of interesting that they were breaking it down to reverse engineer it. And also this room, as it's filled with the death machine and other things. And in the same room, the US government was successful in creating the wonder weapon, as on the table, we could see the winner's hell. And back to the barrier, we can see the Doris teleporter and the same canisters from Kino. And in the cadaver room, or the morgue room, you can see that one of the bodies is missing and there's blood on the floor. So this one zombie seems to start this whole outbreak. And also in the same room, we can see a dissected person. Just like with group 935, they were experimenting on people. And in another room, we get to see a holding pen. And we get to see a pig, which is still alive. And again, like with Group 935, the US government was testing on animals with 115. As in the other holding pens, we can see dead pigs on the floor. This lab area fully cemented and confirmed that the US government was messing with Element 115. It's like with the radios back in Doris, where they said that America has a huge supply of it. Groom Lake, which is Area 51. And the US group was successful, as they created their wonder weapon, the Winter's Howl, and these teleporters, which are very different from the German ones. And even if you go into the Pack-a-Punch room, we get to see the portrait of Richthofen. With this, it fully cements that he's not loyal to anything, as he's not loyal to Group 935, and I think he's not very loyal to the US government. And also, too, something weird happens, with the TVs that show the mystery box of where the location is, as sometimes it flashes the Illuminati symbol. When I saw this for the first time, it completely perplexed me. And also, too, it perplexed the whole Zombies community, because how are they connected to this? And did they cause the outbreak in the Pentagon? And then later on, we get confirmation that Richthofen was part of the Illuminati. So it seems that Richthofen helped influence the program in America. Back to the cause of outbreak, because it wasn't the Illuminati. Because something weird happens after turning the power. After a couple of rounds, it plays the music for a dog round. But then this happens. Warning. Breach detected on level 3. Initiate security protocol It is the Pentagon thief. Today, the Pentagon Dave is seen as an annoying boss to go against since he takes your weapon and teleports away so you have to chase him around the whole map. Well, under the map as he goes around in the lab using the teleporters. And again, I would like to say, this confused players because who is this Pentagon Thief? I know we get him revealed in the next map for Ascension, but right now we're only using the information of 5. It seems the Pentagon Thief had to do something with the outbreak. Because when you kill him, the Pentagon computer says containment failure system modern will remain on alert status. But if he escapes, it will say containment successful. And also too, he was one of the most weirdest characters because he didn't act like the zombies. He seems like he was just a normal person that was just crazy. And well, I have a personal story for you. When I made it to the Pentagon Thieves special round, it kind of confused me because I thought I was going to get a regular dog round. But then I see this guy coming out of the teleporter. It completely surprised me when this happened. Because I was completely in a perplexed state because I didn't even try to shoot him at first when I first saw him. And what makes it worse is the previous round, I got the ray gun out of the box. And when I made it to the Pentagon Thieves round, well, he took the ray gun away from me. And what even makes it more worse, my other weapon didn't have any ammo. So I had to chase him around the lab trying to knife him. And then he got away and I died on the next round. Because I didn't have any points for the mystery box. But yeah, that story happened when it was my first time playing this map as a kid. Getting back to his appearance because he is the most weirdest ones. Because again, like I said, he's not a zombie, he's just a regular person. So due to this, it helped influence many theories. I think I remember one theory saying that he was a member of the Illuminati, just like Richthofen. I think I remember hearing a theory about that. I might be wrong on that. But I think that's about it. I could talk about the Pentagon Thief. Because I don't think there's nothing else. Because, yeah, first time, it confused everyone. But as we got used to it, he was just an annoying boss to go against. Because he would just take your weapon and just run away. But I think that's all I have to talk about about 5. Because the lab part of the map is really creepy. But everything else is just alright, it's not really that scary, just only that part of that section. But I think many people don't fondly remember this map, because 5 is one of the hardest maps. Because it's very tight corners and there's a lot of paths that could get you trapped and get killed. And in the war room on the top part of the level, it's very easy to get trapped in. 
because the zombies come out of the doors and they could block your path. The bottom part is one of the greatest places to train the zombies on this map. But on this map, you bleed dry because a lot of doors are very expensive. And that, that's not even the worst part, because in my opinion, I think the worst part of this map is it's the hardest, is the lab area. There are so many openings of where zombies can spawn, and then you have the Nova 6 crawlers coming out of the ceiling too. So you can quickly get overrun. And also too, what makes it harder is when you turn on the power, because the Pentagon Thief activates after the power is turned on, and then you have these teleporters. And when you go into them, they teleport you randomly around the map. And then which you could get screwed over, because you could be behind a horde of zombies, and then it teleports you right in front of them. And this map restricts you because it has a lot of tight corners that can get you killed. So I think it made zombie players choose Kino over 5. But to me, I enjoy playing 5. As a kid, I was always trying to find a strategy on what to do. Like I would try to min-max on whatever I could get to the power quick. And then figure out how to survive as long as I can. To me, I would like to think that 5 helped a lot of zombie players because it had to make us think in order to strategize on how to successfully go to higher rounds. As this map is one of the challenging maps in zombies history. So with 5 and Kino out of the way, the two free maps that came with the launch title, zombie players were eagerly to wait for the next map, as the next map, just like with War of War, would be released in a DLC. And this DLC was the most important one, because this map led to the first complex easter egg, and continued to make the zombie storyline intriguing, which made more zombies players come back to it, and new zombie players as now the zombie storyline was continuing. That map is called Ascension. Oh boy, I love Ascension. Ascension is one of my favorite maps. I know some people might not like it because of one certain enemy in this map. I love this map to death. This was my most played map on back on Xbox 360. Well, enough of me reminiscing, let's get into the map. Because this map continues the comic book style like the one from Kino, with the loading screen. And we were revealed that Ascension takes place in the Cosmodrome. Standing with the Japanese experiments, the German experiments, and the American experiments, this was a place of where Element 115 was experimented on. So this map continues the tradition of an overrun testing facility. And I always love the beginning part when you start the map. Because as you load in, you come from a lander coming down into Ascension, then seeing the whole place covered in blood. Well, some parts of it covered in blood. And then the fact that the power's off, and then now we're in black and white mode. After getting out of the lander as the round started, you hear someone's voice. Please, help me. She's coping. The mechanism must be repaired. Who are you? Oh, who the hell is this person and why does he want us to help him? And who is coming? Who is this person that's coming after him? Because he seems like he's endangered. And then he says the mechanism. What the hell is he talking about? I mean, your character reacts to it too. He's like, he has no clue who this person is. And this was the first calling for the Easter egg, as we have to help this person. But that's a whole multitude of steps, but I'm going to be talking about the environment first, and then we'll get to the Easter egg part. So, oh, as you can notice, everything's black and white, due to the power not being turned on. As like the computer said, it has using backup power. And we have to turn on the power to bring back the color. And holy crap, they did a good job with bringing back the color. I like this transition effect. I always loved this effect, it was so cool. And then so, the Cosmodrome comes to life, as the rocket gets ready to be put in position to ready to take off. But not yet, because we have to activate the landers to make it go off. And then now, we can see the whole facility in full detail. And just like with the 5 map, these people were probably recently churned, as this was a facility, and that there's scientists, there's people with pilot suits or flight suits, and then there's soldiers. And it seems like this place went to hell as there's fire around the map and there's broken rubble. Even the zombies on this map are more grotesque, as some of them have burned skin and their flesh is almost like in a burn-like state their flesh is contorted into this new scarring. It's like the whole flamey thing adds on to the whole creepiness as it makes the zombies more unsettled. As these people were probably caught under the rebel and burned to death and thanks to the experiments of element 115 in the air caused them to be zombies. In this map besides the ones from all the other black ops maps these zombies appearance are more grotesque in my opinion as they look more horrifying and terrifying. And that's not all there's little details in these zombies too. Like with the soldiers, the soldiers move around when you aim at them. It seems like they still have their old memories, which is a horrifying thought because these guys are now animals now, acting out in a primal instinct as they want to kill you. This only applies to the soldiers. It doesn't apply to the scientists because they don't move around, they just keep walking in front of you. I feel like they should have kept this detail in the future zombie maps, but they didn't. I think this is the only map where the zombies do this. 
I don't know, it just adds to the uneasiness flair because they're still using instinctual memory to fight against us, which is really creepy because they're dead, but yet they're still able to remember their past lives. And then so, Ascension was once a Soviet research place, but now it's a Soviet hellhole filled with the undead. And oh yeah, I forgot to mention, the character models are bloody in this map. I always love this part of the map. I know I'm in solo, I can't show you the body, so I'll just show images of their character models covered with blood. I always love this change because it shows that how much of our characters have been surviving as they're covered in zombie blood. I feel like they should have kept this in the future zombie titles because it would have been a real cool detail. Because imagine your character model getting dirtier each time the round passes, it shows how much you've been surviving. Because it would have been really cool like by the time you get to round 20, your character model isn't covered in blood. It doesn't cover your screen but it would have been really cool if it just covered your character model. But there's a reason why our characters are covered with blood. Because they came from the Kino facility. They used a lander that was found in Kino and made it to Ascension. So anyways, let's get back to the power, because there's a special round on this map. And it's not Hellhounds. Just like with 5, there's a new special enemy with every 5 rounds that come. Now oh boy, you're in for a treat, because first time, we didn't know what to expect. Was it the Hellhounds again? Or was it like 5, where an entirely new enemy? And I'll get to show you. So we got monkey rounds, as these monkeys are infected with element 115. Again, I'm usually mostly nostalgia for all my memories, but first time when this happened to me, I had no fucking clue what was going on. With the announcer saying re-entry and that these big things coming down on the ground, the landers, and then I see these monkeys coming out of the landers. It was a massive what the fuck moment. And I love the build up for these rounds, with the landers hitting the ground super hard, the announcer and the alarms blaring. It's just really good what they did with the audio for these rounds. It really immersed you in the game. So we can say that the Soviets were using Element 115 and were doing the same thing as the Americans and Germans, testing on animals, and the result of the Soviet experiments were these monkeys. And also the fact too, these guys are wearing spacesuits. So the Soviets were testing 115 in space too. But later on in the story, I don't think they touch up on some of the Soviet space experiments. I think they only focus on the German ones with Griffin Station. But back to Ascension. So I think practically everyone hates the monkeys. They're one of the hard boss enemies to go against and they're very annoying as they steal your perks. And it's especially very hell if you're playing solo. If you're playing multiplayer, well, you're gonna do fine. But solo, you're just screwed. I mean, you can see in my footage too, I'm defending Quick Revive and Juggernaut. But I will admit the criticism on this map. The monkeys ruined this great map. I think if they didn't have the ability to steal their perks, I think this would have been a great map and one of the classic maps. But it's not because how annoying these monkeys are. But at least you get rewarded because if you don't let the monkeys touch the perk machines, you get a free perk. It's kind of a bad deal because then you have to go defend that perk. But with the monkey rounds, when you first time see them, they were surprising and again, like what I said, it was the biggest what the fuck moment. Oh, even later on, we get more confirmation that they were testing the monkeys on one of the radios. But we're not going to be going to the radios yet, because I want to talk about extra stuff on this map. And on this map, we get one of the most favorite fan favorite perks ever, PhD Flopper. As a kid, I always wanted this perk, no matter what. And it's an awesome perk, as in the gates explosive damage and you get to do something cool when you dolphin dive as it creates a massive explosion. Man, I don't know why they never brought this back in BL2. Well, they did, but that's on Origins. But for some reason, it's absent in Black Ops 3. Uh, I don't know why. This was a fan favorite perk, so it doesn't make any sense why they won't make this a staple, as they put Deadshot Daiquiri. Well, Deadshot Daiquiri is a really useless perk, but I don't know why I'm talking about that. It's not on this map, it's on the next map, Call of the Dead. But yeah, PhD Flopper, one of the best. And another awesome thing about this map is that you have to use the landers to unlock Pack-a-Punch. I know some people might be bothered by that because you have to keep buying doors and keep using the landers, but I always thought this was super cool to unlock Pack-a-Punch. And you get to see the rocket go off. Who doesn't love seeing a rocket going off into space? But that's how you unlock Pack-a-Punch by using the three landers. This map is just great. Just the monkeys are holding it back. But with me talking about the environment and the atmosphere, I think it's the perfect time to get to the radios as it helps explore us more of the lore on this map and again continues the zombie storyline. As with the first radio, we hear the voice that seems to be the guy that told us to help him in the beginning of the map. And again, I'll have all these radios timestamped. Convey my sincere gratitude to you for that. But on to business. 
I am pleased to report that all projects are running smoothly again at the recent personnel changes. As I had previously mentioned, Yuri Zavoisky is a brilliant scientist, but he has so far proven incapable of handling Project Mercury. Or as you call it, the Gersh device. Uh, so, due to numerous delays and setbacks, I have sadly been forced to transfer Yuri to the 8K64-A experiments. I have decided that your nephew should take his place and look forward to working with him directly. Yuri's incident with the Casimir mechanism leaves no doubt in my mind that this is the right decision. The explosion caused the mechanism significant damage. It will take time to remanufacture all of the parts, unless some of them can be salvaged. And so the man behind the radio is named Dr. Gersh. Him and Yuri created the Gersh device, which is a very awesome weapon for a special grenade. I think it's even better than the monkeys. But back to Dr. Gersh, it seems that he runs the whole operation in Ascension. As he moves Yuri to a different project, as he messed with the chasm mechanism, as it caused significant damage to the device and they have to rebuild it. So Dr. Gersh moves Yuri to a different project. And we see the result of that in the second radio. Rockets! He transfers me to work on rockets! These experiments require no finesse, no imagination. My intellect is ill-served blasting a bunch of monkeys into the atmosphere. But I can't fight Gersh over this. I was able to hold on to my keys. Huh? Some after hours research. No one else really understands what Project Mercury is capable of. Until then, this lab will have to do. Wait, is that a Matrice doll? Is someone with a child? So for Yuri, he's bittered by being transferred to the rocket projects. And we get confirmation that the 115 monkeys are the result of his or the group's experimentations as he's blasting monkeys into space. Again, he's still bitter being transferred from the Gersh device to these monkey projects. Though he makes do what he has right now. But he finds something weird on the facility or in the lab because he finds a Russian doll and he says that someone let a child in. He goes more into this in the third radio. Found the box today. Some Rebenka left his teddy bear in it. A disgusting and filthy toy. Who keeps bringing their child onto this base? Thank God they did not take the diary. The things I've learned about Element 1. I'll have to conduct this research on my own, away from the destructive hands of Gersh. His research into Project Mercury has stalled. But will he be transferred? I doubt it. As long as Project remains on track, his friends act. I must start small. So Yuri finds more weird things around the base. He finds the mystery box, and he finds the teddy bear. And this is Samantha's teddy bear. And the thing is, he finds a diary and has detailed accounts of Element 115. And Yuri does his own research on it, as he doesn't want the others to take it away from him. Especially Dr. Gersh, as he doesn't want him because he's more destructive with it. But the thing is, the radio statics out when he's working on a different project. And it seems Yuri is scheming right now. We get more confirmation of what other project Dr. Gersh was working on in the fourth radio. I assure you that our craft will be far superior to whatever the Americans, or should I say, Canadians <laughs> are developing. Finally, Project Thunder is nearing completion. My staff has assured me that the remaining issues of the effective range and power cell size will be solved within the next few months. Oh, and also, you should know that Dr. Zavoisky does not appear to be adjusting to his new position. He has been hostile towards the other scientists, at least more than usual, and has frequently been seen muttering to himself. The transition must have been hard for him, but if he does not learn his place soon, I may require another more competent scientist to replace him. So we get Dr. Gersh was working on the other project, Project Thunder, which is the Thunder Gun. He says that his wonder weapon is better than the American ones. But something weird is going on with Fury, as he's being hostile to the other scientists and is talking to himself. Dr. Gersh thinks it's the result of him replacing him to the new project, as he thinks Yuri is taking it the hardest from being replaced. But unknown to Dr. Gersh, Yuri was around Element 115, and Element 115 corrupts the mind. And in the next radio, we hear himself talking to himself. He's after in my head. Always in my head. I can't find her. I can't. Oh, I can't stop it. Keep it out. Why won't she leave me alone? Calm down, Yuri. Calm down. No, no, I won't. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up! You'll uh, stop! Fine. Okay. Okay. I will. 
So Yuri hears voices in his head, and in the radio we can faintly hear the whispers in the background. And Yuri gives in to them, and as a result of that, we have the final radio for the map. This should better be good, Yuri. The fact that you are even in this lab again is reason enough to have you permanently removed. If you've done anything that will ruin Ned's inspection tomorrow. Do not worry. You will not be disappointed. <laughs> in fact, I'm sure you won't forget it. But I can't take all the credit. If you will do me the honors. So, Dr. Gersh gets sucked up by his own device, as Yuri used the Gersh device on him, as it seemed the voices inside Yuri's head was Samantha Max's, and she encouraged him to kill Dr. Gersh. But the thing is, Dr. Gersh survived, as in the beginning of the map we get to hear his voice. It's more disembodied, but he's in a weird state, as he says that he's trapped somewhere. Back to Yuri, it seems Yuri regretted killing Dr. Gersh, or as he thinks. As Dr. Gersh gets sucked into the device, he regrets killing him. But the thing is, Yuri is the Pentagon thief, as Ascension and 5 take place simultaneously. And it seems that after Dr. Gersh gets sucked up by the Gersh device, the zombie outbreak happened at Ascension, as it lets Samantha Maxis to get full control, as she is manipulating Yuri, and that is the result of the Pentagon outbreak. But back to Dr. Gersh, because for this map, for the easter egg, we got to save him. This was the first complex easter egg in Zombies history, as you had to do a lot of steps. And you needed 4 people in order to do the easter egg can't do the easter egg on solo. So due to that, I don't have many people that have Black Ops 1 on PC, so I had to download the mod in order to do the easter egg and show it to you guys. And I did every easter egg for every map on Black Ops 1. And I have to say, this was mostly a pain in the ass to do. I'm gonna go on a little rant because I think the box on Black Ops 1 is the worst luck. Because in order to do the easter egg, you need to get the wonder weapon for the map. So you have to spend a lot of points in buying the box. And the box is one of the worst chances of getting a weapon. Well, in Black Ops 1, using the other map on 5, I got the China Lake 4 times in a row in one box spin. And not only that, but the mod I downloaded first for Ascension didn't work, so I had to find another mob to do the easter egg. And so, I nearly lost my mind. Because I did 3 attempts with Ascension with the other broken mod and I got nothing. I even went to round 26 in order to do the easter egg and it didn't work. Because for one of the steps, you have to be on the monkey round. And you have to press special buttons in a matter of 60 seconds. But with the broken mod, they didn't even work at all. So I just stood there waiting for each monkey round and I hadn't realized that it was not working. So I'm gonna be honest with you. Every easter egg I did after this map were not legit. I went into god mode and did them. But everything else is legit, like the first beginning parts of the map where I'm shooting the zombies. That I'm in normal mode, but when I'm doing the easter eggs I'm in god mode. Maybe in the future I'll do the easter eggs legit. But doing them solo, holy crap it was a chore. So enough of me ranting, let's get into the ascension easter egg. Then it's gonna be a speedy one too. So for the first step, you need the Gersh device, and you need to throw it in this corner, and it will suck up the power device. And the computer says this, and also Yuri talks. And so for the next step, we have to find power, and you have to go to this area. But the weird thing is, it has a Illuminati symbol on it. Power points of power. As we do these steps, he gets more desperate as Samantha Maxis is close on killing him. So we go to step 3, activating the second node, as we have to do it on the monkey round. You're a space monkey? Node 2 activated. So we go to step 4, where we have to stand in the Packer Punch Room for a solid minute. Who brings shame to the zombie people? Due to the mod, well, we skip the Luna part as we have to use the Lunar Landers to spell out Luna. You're not missing much as the computer says Chasm Mechanism Node 4 activated. And Dr. Gersh says that the Chasm Mechanism is activated now. And it needs to be opened more. So in turns, we get into the final steps of the easter egg. Of where we gotta use the Gersh device and shoot it with a thunder gun so Yuri could be finally free. 
And as we free him, something happens at the end of the easter egg. Something really terrifying. Ah, yes! I'm free! I cannot make it. Warning! Re-entry detected. All security personnel on the I hope you return. So Samantha Maxis gets really pissed off that Dr. Gersh escaped and the way how she gets mad was terrifying because when I did the easter egg I completely forgot about that she did this. The way she screams and the whole screen turns back to black and white like the beginning of the map and then goes back to color. It shows that how much power she has and back in the day it proved more of the theory that Samantha Maxis was controlling the zombies and controlling the whole thing altogether. Because this easter egg further cement that Samantha Maxis was an evil person. But she's more of a tragic villain, as Dr. Richthofen led her to be in this state. And that's the end of the easter egg for Ascension. The reason I include these easter eggs because many players like me didn't have enough people to do these easter eggs. So back in the day I would watch them on YouTube. Some of the old legend YouTubers doing the easter egg for the first time. I remember one YouTube video and one channel that did the whole easter egg and talked about the lore for this game and for War of War. But I think that channel is long deleted. His last video was on Black Ops 2 Transit and he showed the Google Maps a version of the Area 51 so I think he might have gotten legal trouble. But due to this, since we didn't have enough people to do the easter eggs, the zombies community grew. As more people were getting into the lore and to the easter eggs. Though the lore community grew with the ascension map, as this was the first complex easter egg ever in zombies history. And it helped more evidence with established theories and killed a bunch of theories too. So it naturally led zombie players to be more intrigued for the next map and the next DLC. As the zombie storyline was ever growing and we wanted to know why Samantha Maxis was doing all of this. And that how were the main crew going to stop Samantha Maxis. So that was the whole map of Ascension. We're going to go to the next one. The next DLC. Call of the Dead. Now I can't play the intro cinematic for Call of the Dead because it has copyrighted music. But it's one of the coolest. But for this map, the crew is changed as it's using celebrity actors for the first time. As we have Michael Rooker, known to play Yondu in Guardians of the Galaxy, is part of the crew. We have Danny Trejo, who's Machete. Robert England, who played Freddy Krueger. And we have Sarah Michelle Gellar, who played Buffy the Vampire Slayer and is Daphne in this live action Scooby-Doo movie. So we have a whole celebrity cast, which is really cool and really funny too. My favorite character was Danny Trejo. But we got one more celebrity. Legend himself, George A. Romero man who started the modern zombies genre. May he rest in peace. Though for the setting of the Call of the Dead, it takes place in Siberia, adds an abandoned Group 935 outpost as the shipwreck is nearby. And the reason the celebrity crew are here is that George Romero tried to shoot a movie on here, but got turned into a zombie. So the celebrity crew are left here to survive. So with the environment of Call of the Dead, it takes place in an arctic place. And due to that, we get snowstorms that occasionally happen on the map. And also too, the zombies appearances are changed again as they more reflect their environment again. Even some of the zombies are covered in icicles and snow, and other zombies have their jaw missing. But not only that, George Romero got churned, so he follows you throughout the map. Well, very slowly. But I guess you could say that's kind of creepy, but I think later on, everyone got annoyed by it. And I think with the snowstorm too, I might be wrong on that, because it doesn't cover your visibility like transit does, so I might be wrong on that. But yeah, the whole aesthetic of Call of the Dead is that we're messing with zombies that are stuck in the snow for a very long time. I like the environment in this one as the snow covers the abandoned outpost and then we have the shipwreck too. But I don't think I could see anything else about the environment. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. We're in an abandoned snow area so naturally it's going to be very snowy. So with that, I think I'm going to go straight into the lore as this was an abandoned Group 935 outpost. So let's start with the first radio. Target entry 1471. Date. September 2nd, 1945. Dear diary, another day, another fair. This time, subject N3WB just blankly at the floor. The Russian subject still smells like urine, even after he was given a bath and deloused twice. But I think I might have killed the specimen from Mexico. His spleen is on the floor and he's not moving anymore. I can verify with certainty, however, that the barrier is not located in the spleen. Dr. Max, continue no matter the cost. I wonder what he might think of the experiment, the little girl. <laughs> nice! Drop that! That's my sleep! My so with the first radio, we have Edward Richthofen on it. And remember back in Doris, he was part of the Group 95 experiments and also two of Kino, as he was a scientist in these projects. And you can already tell with Richthofen, he was crazy. And you could hear some certain quotes he says during the maps. 
as he tested on Nikolai and Takio. And he thinks he killed his best friend from Mexico, whose name is Pablo. But another horrifying thing was revealed on here. He apparently tested on Samantha Maxis, behind Maxis' back. You can already tell that Rick Poffin is a sociopath. He doesn't care for others, he only cares for himself. And also too, the date of the diary takes place in 1945, which shows more of the Group 935's experiments on this outpost. And the early days of Rick Toffin when he used to help Group 935. So we get to hear more of his diaries with the second radio. September 10th, 1945. Dear diary, today was a good day. The swelling has subsided. The ice helps. They made liverwurst for lunch. It was... I still have not had any luck reprogramming any of the live specimens. Dr. Ma the key to unlocking the human mind will be more easily discovered on someone who isn't dead yet. I am not convinced. The army is stored until I can break this, this trust barrier. Oh, apparently someone in security found a spy in the group. They are delivering him from Brooklyn. The place of one that I broke. <laughs> oh. So with the second radio, we now know the area is meant to produce zombies. And it's possible the zombies we are fighting right now are from that old era, as again, it takes place in 1945. And we get a mention of the spy and Verruck. A spy is revealed in the third radio. Log entry 1473. Date, September 17th, 1945. Dear Diary, today... It's a dirty Nazi. Uh-oh. It's not that's right. You want some of this? I'm taking you home in bags. Freak! Nine! I don't think so, America! I suppose this must be the replacement best. Time to get to work. I can still hear you. Hit him again with the stick! So we have the first interaction with Tank Dempsey and Edward Richtofen. And of course, given Edward Richtofen's sociopath, he treats Tank Dempsey indifferent. And it seems he's gonna test on them. So with Tank Dempsey, Nikolai, and Takio, they all have been experimented on by Edward Richtofen. The thing is, why don't they hate Edward Richtofen's guts? It feels like they should remember that. But we'll reveal to that in the next radio. Log entry 1474, date September 20th, 1945. Dear Diary, it would seem that the OSS realized that we captured one of their spies. They tried to send a rescue team into Verut. That was all. First batch of the subject. <laughs> I suspect there are other moles in the organization. Dr. Harvey Ena. And Dr. Peter McKay, to be precise. Dr. McKay oh. include any Americans in Group 935, no matter how much genius they held. Stupid Americans, they say. Apple pies on baseball and children. But I digress. The new American test subject is interesting. Not much of His intellect seems low, but his will is strong. Like others, he doesn't seem to know who he is anymore. Unlike the others, he keeps breaking for restraints and yelling at me. Test subject N3WB is still staring at the floor, muttering what sounds like some kind of proverb over and over again. I think his mind may have been destroyed by the process. Oh well. The Russian subject recently began responding to stimuli, but only after injecting him with a new serum made primarily from vodka. Perhaps this is a breakthrough we've been waiting for. And in this radio, we are revealed that the characters Tank Dempsey, Takio, and Nikolai never used to act like this, as we see them in game. And apparently they were normal before, but due to Edward Richtofen's experiments on them, they act like this now. And this was due to 115 exposure, as Element 115 causes you to lose memories, and it's the reason why the group hasn't attacked Richtofen yet. But still, they have the old sense of that they can't trust them yet. But it's very minor because they still follow Edward Richtofen's orders. Also, you remember back in Shinonuma with the hanging guy? Well, we got his full name now, Peter McKang. For this radio, it abruptly cuts off. With this, we have the confirmation of why the main characters are acting weird. Not yet with Richtofen, because it seems like he didn't test on himself. So, like with the previous maps, Element 115 can corrupt you. It's like how it corrupted our characters. And during the time of that map, during back then, we thought the same thing happened to Samantha Maxis. As you remember, Richtofen tested on her. So it's probably element 115 corrupted her too. But we still have one more radio left. 
And with this one, we get to see more of Richthofen's descent into madness. Fog entry 1475. Date, October 1st, 1945. Dear Diamond, as for the control group test, they have been put on hold. Recently, I discovered that the does not plan mass producing the DG2 as he swore he'd not if he won't move those plans forward, then I will continue following his dream of an undead army. He doesn't deserve his perch of power. He doesn't know what to do with it. But I know just what to do with him. And I'll take care of that little brat if I get a chance to. So with the last radio, we get a reason why Rick Toffin hated Dr. Maxis and wanted to kill him. And also to kill Samantha Maxis. And it really sucks too because Edward Richthofen and Dr. Maxis were friends. But it seems Element 115 was corrupting Richthofen and slowly Dr. Maxis. But it seems Edward Richthofen was more of exposure as he's more crazy now. All these radios cement the idea that Richthofen is really crazy. But since we're done with all the radios, we're gonna head to the Easter Egg. As, like with the other one, it continued the zombie storyline. For this map, I'm gonna go on another little rant because this one took almost the longest. The longest was Moon, I'll give a reason why. But for this map, my game kept crashing. The reason it kept crashing because it picked up the dual wield pistols and for some reason it will always crash my game. And I was in the middle of the easter egg steps. And also too, you need a wonder weapon from the box in order to continue a step in the easter egg. But in order to start the easter egg, you have to turn on the power. And then you go to this bunker where you hear some funny dialogue from the characters. Why are you in such a hurry? We're stuck in this room! Hello! There is a Russian stuck in the room! This is not it's cool. a new dawn, people! Bombs are clearing! Excuse Praise me! Lord. Is there anyone out there that would be able to help? Hello! Ah, I'm blind! I'm blind! In my eyes! Holy shit balls! Me too! What did you do, Rick Toppin? I did nothing! There's a light switch. Oh, I think I found an Eva. Perhaps this will turn on the light. No! Ah, electro! That's not a lever! Rick Toppin! <laughs> Shh! Did you hear that? Sounded like someone outside. Hey, you! Hey! I need vodka! Hello! Can you help us? There must be a blown fuse or something. It's dark in here. <laughs> oh, man. That's wet. So the main characters are stuck in the bunker, and we have to find a fuse in order to help them out as we knife the door and we blinded Nikolai and Tank Dempsey. And as it's dark in the room where Rick Toffin tries to fight quote unquote a light switch. So we have to help him out and find a fuse. I always love the little dialogue when they're in the bunker, even when the part when Nikolai throws up inside the bunker. So that's the next easter egg stick, we have to find the fuse. Yeah that takes care of the light. Ah, oh, much better. Now I can see some problem. We must have gone too far into the future. Look, the teleporter's completely broken. The time suckers are damaged. We'll have to reroute them. Wait! You took us here on purpose? Where are we? A better question, Denshi. Oh, look at this blinky light! <laughs> What's this button do? Nikolai! <laughs> no! Oh, great, Nikolai. You've just activated the MTD security system. Good. Excuse me, your side. Yeah, the handsome one. We need you to locate the power sources of the security system. They look like little half domes with a hole on top. Kind of like a big... Forget it. If you destroy those, it should shut down the security system. Man, I love the dialogue. It's still funny to this day. So after we put in the fuse, Nikolai <laughs> accidentally presses a button that causes the security system to activate. So we have to destroy these generators with explosives, mainly our grenades or Semtex. So after you destroy the fourth one, another set of funny dialogue happens. The domes are in little bitty pieces. What do you need now? Okay, that did the trick. Ah, yes. Takeo, can you hand me that screwdriver? <laughs> okay, you. Is that all he's going to do this trip? Takeo, let's dance, you barfing fool. So now that they're occupied, I was wondering, could you do a special errand for me? I need you to retrieve a very important device. It looks like a long, stiff, hard golden rod. Oh, it's fingers on the end. Oh, so for the next step, we are tasked by Edward Richthofen to retrieve a device. In order to retrieve this device, we have to go to the captain's headquarters as a submarine comes out of the ground flashing Morse code. Well, sounding Morse code. So we do end that steps and a green light appears at the lighthouse. 
And so this is where the Wonder Weapon steps in for this map, the VR1 device, as it turns zombies into humans. But at the bottom, you have to turn a zombie into a human and you will get selected by the Golden Light. And you have to kill him. And then that's when we get the Golden Rod. This looks like... So we got the device that Rick Toffin requested, and we have to deliver it to him, which sets another set of funny dialogue. Um, you guys get your thing okay? Kinda sick that I have to ask this, but Rick Toffin, is that a rod in your pocket? Nine! Let's go. I've got this what we need. <laughs> yeah! Drunk! <laughs> Thank you so much for your help out there. Bye bye Hey, what up? Should I get out and push? <sighs> the fuse box must have shorted out again. Oh, come on. This better be more rewarding than the last time. Stupid gush. What the? Another fuse. Do you think this is a hardware store out here? Hey, do I get a prize? Thank you again, stranger. Perhaps we will see you another time. Goodbye. Yo, sauerkraut. You ever did tell us why we came? Come on in good time, my clever Denshi. All in good time. <laughs> oh, that's what you get for eating raw fish! So that's the end of the Call of the Dead easter egg. Now we know why we were not playing the original crew, as they were probably transported from Ascension to this place, as Rick Tobin says that they're probably in the future. But something off seems to have been weird with these characters. It seems like they bring the zombies wherever they go. You can probably say 5 is an exception, but you remember it takes the same place as Ascension around the same time. And probably during that time Samantha Maxis didn't like Yuri and probably wanted to finish him off, but Yuri was smart. So it seems the main characters bring the apocalypse around them, or these outbreaks. Are they causing the outbreaks or is it something else entirely? And also remember too, Samantha Maxis is in control of the zombies. Or we think, that's revealed in Moon. After everything, our characters get teleported to the next map. But I want to give some final thoughts on Call of the Dead. Call of the Dead, I was saying Black Ops 1 is one of the least terrifying maps on this. I try to recall some nostalgic memories I had when I played this map as a kid, but nothing. There was hardly anything scary about this map. It was just the appearance of the zombies and the environment, but that really didn't scare me as like the other ones. But Call of the Dead is a really solid map. So with Call of the Dead out of the way, we're going to go to the next map of where the main four characters teleported to, Shangri-La. The Shangri-La loading screen and continue the comic book style too. And holy crap, I remember so many theory videos I tried to touch up on the Shangri-La loading screen, as it was the most confusing one out of all of them. I think I remember that's proven that the tornado on the back is a time tornado. And also too, Shangri-La was on Mars, but now is on Earth, thanks to this time tornado. So as we get into the map, Shangri-La is a beautiful map that has a lot of dangerous factors to it, as the undead are here. And we're in a dangerous temple that has traps in it. And we're in a jungle environment. And Shangri-La has a dangerous beauty to it. And also, it continues the tradition with all the zombies appearances are different now, as some of the zombie appearances have boils on them and some of them are malnourished. And not only that, we're introduced to two new zombie types, the Napalm Zombie and the Shrieker Zombie. Napalm Zombie is one of the most dangerous zombies on this map. As for the Shrieker, well, he's underwhelming. He's not really that much of a danger. He's more of an annoyance. So just like with Shino Numa, Shangri-La copies the same environment as it, as it copies the aesthetic of a jungle. Like with Shino Numa, it copies the aesthetic of a swamp. But for Shangri-La, it captures the aesthetic of a rainforest. This map had a lot of good ambience. It feels like we're in a jungle, but in a small part of it. And it captures that sense of dangerous beauty, just like with any other jungle. They're very beautiful, but once you go inside, it is very dangerous. It's a very dangerous environment, and especially for humans. So after the events of the Call of the Dead Easter Egg, the main crew is transported to Shangri-La. On this map, Richtofen continues his quest to acquire a new device. But the thing is, what does he want to do with these devices? And that will be answered in the Easter Egg. But before I get into the Easter Egg, we're going to have to learn more lore about the map as there's more radios on this map, and there's 8 of them, and it seems in the radios there's explorers on this map, so let's start with the first radio. The heat and humidity is just excruciating. According to the locals, the temple should be in this mountain range just up this river. Gary, do you hear that? A waterfall! We must be close. Hand me the binoculars. There is a structure up ahead. If this is truly a gateway to Argatha, my work will finally be validated. Uh, Brock, 
I don't think this place is abandoned. Don't be silly. This place has to be thousands of years old. I have found some unfinished carvings around the structures I can't make out. They do not look like... Wait, what is this? What the hell was that? Why is the sky dark? It's an eclipse. We must have... Run! Zombies! We have to find another way! Zombies? What are you talking about? The writings must have been right. The... No! Don't touch that! Damn! Take a look around and try to find a way out. I got nothing. We will have to conserve our supplies. Take your shoes off and hand me your socks. I have been trapped in the temple structure for days. Gary is dead, and I don't see a way out of here. I can still hear the zombies outside. I fear this is my last recording, as the battery is about to die, and I will soon follow. One thing I can be certain of is that Glove. So after the first radio is done, we get the first mention of our Gartha. Back in the day, we had no clue what a Gartha was. And due to this, it continued so many theories and created new ones. Because what was a Gartha? Because it seems the way how the explorers are seen, it's supposed to be a heavenly place. How was this connected to zombies? And this was everyone's first thought. As a Gartha will be revealed in Black Ops 2 at the end of Origins, and we'll see more of it in Black Ops 3. But during the time of Black Ops 1, we had no clue what a Gartha was. But back to the explorers, they get killed in the end of the recording, as the zombies overrun them, or the zombies are chasing them, and they're killed by, killed by the zombies and their bodies are stuck in the temple. And also too, an eclipse happens, but the only zombies come out when the eclipse happens, which is really weird. But anyways, let's go to the next radio. We are moving through a small network of tunnels. This appears to be some sort of aqueduct system, unless this was carved out a much later... Holy crap! We need to start digging and get past this cave-in! Well, we lucked out on that. I wouldn't classify any of this as lucky. Well, we are still alive. Shh. Do you hear that? Quickly, under there. Great, another dead end. Well, at least we're safe for now. Really? Wait, this is weird. We got the two same explorers again. How do they survive? Didn't we just hear them die in the other radio? And it seems like in this radio too, they die again. And in the more radios too, they die again too. That did it! His leg is free and the way is clear! Let's get moving! We are moving through a small network of tunnels. This appears to be some sort of aqueduct system. Unless this was carved out at a much later... And that's the last audio log of recording. There's still other audio logs, but I couldn't find the sound file for them, so I'm just gonna give a brief summary of what happened. The two explorers keep dying over and over again, and even one of them mentions Argartha again. They want to prove the existence of it. This shows that how much of Gartha's must be an important place, because this guy is determined to prove it no matter what. And also too, they're slightly aware that they're in a loop as they keep seeing the eclipse and they keep talking about how they keep dying and at the last radio they see an inscription it has the name Richtofen on it on an altar but in this last audio log too they're proven to be in the loop as they get the treasure they go back in the time loop forever stuck in the cycle of Shangri-La as they keep dying to the temple I'm sorry that I couldn't get the rest of the radio recordings but I like the story of what happened to these explorers as the site as they're on a continuous cycle forever trapped in Shangri-La and there's nothing that can help them out this whole idea of a cycle continuing on in the torturous experience happens in Black Ops 2 and in the future zombie storyline. I think with every map they made the zombie storyline as they continue as they go and it wasn't always pre-planned. It's kind of interesting as this is an accidental foreshadowing. Because I think they made the zombie storyline as they continue because I think they didn't think that zombies was going to be this big. So with the explorer story out of the way with the radios, we're going to head to the easter egg as Shangri-La continues the complex easter egg steps now. 
And again, you can't do this on solo, so I'm using a mod again. The first step is to turn on the power and then go back to the starting room to hit all these four levers. And then we see something really cool. And also hear the same explorers. Whoa! Okay, what the hell just happened? Why does everything look blue? Look, there is an eclipse! Fascinating. What look? There's a giant meteor on top of the temple. I must have it in my pocket. Yeah, good luck with that. Hello up there. Hello! We are stuck behind some kind of mechanism. Whatever you did moved it slightly. We really could use some help here. But we're plunged into Eclipse, and we're stuck in the Shangri-La loop. And then we have to help these explorers now. As Richtofen wants the giant meteor in the sky as its element 115, the dialogue that Richtofen says it shows how eager he wants it, almost like he wants power. This which cements his craziness as he always act like this in the other previous radios. For the rest of the Easter egg, we had to help these two explorers and help them escape Shangri-La. After using the magical plates to get to this step, you have to go to the next step and go to the water slide to activate a lever. And then they talk again. Yee! I feel like little boy again! Except for what? Oh, not again. We are trapped down here between two gates, and the water is rising. Can you see any way to open these gates? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Find the button, pull the string, yada, yada, yada. Oh, well, after the water slide, we have to help them again. It seems like we're helping them in this loop. It's almost like we're kind of saving their lives. In the same radios that we hear them in the same situation, but they got killed. It seems like we're helping them. So for the next step, something comes out of this guy and hits near the waterfall. And we need to use the wonder weapon, the shrink ray, in order to shoot it and, and knife it. We we'll go down the waterfall and then we get to the next step. You gotta go! After that weird stone lands on the tower, we have to go to the next step, where the gas pipes are. As again, the explorers are stuck into some sort of gas, and in order to complete the step, we need a napalm zombie. After that, we have to use the spike claymores in order to trap the holes. As again, the explorers are stuck in some sort of trap. Then with the rest of the easter eggs, I'm gonna go rapid fire. After this step, we get another stone that sits upon another tower, and we have to knife 12 panels. And after that, we have to mess with these wheels in order to get to the next step. And then now, and after that's done, another stone appears on another temple, I mean another tower. And then after that, we have to find dynamite. And after we find the dynamite, we have to use the shrink ray to fire against the focusing crystals. And after crystals have been shot, the meteor gets shrunk down and back into the temple. Hell. So the meteor gets shrunk into the temple where pack a punch is. And this is where we need to use the dynamite. And after blowing up the wall behind the pack a punch, we get the meteor. Get the meteor! Check it out! I'm all perked up! And that's the end of the Shangri-La Easter Egg. The explorers are back in their time loop again, forever stuck in there. But Richtofen doesn't give a crap as he now has the meteor in order to stop something. Because now he has the Golden Rod device and now the Element 115 meteor. As this will help Richtofen's journey to stop the whole madness. So that was Shangri-La, an amazing map. And it was slightly different too as it doesn't follow the aesthetic of an abandoned outpost or an abandoned research place. Or even an overrun research facility. So Shangri-La was a unique map for the time. Like I said earlier, this helped spawn more theories. As what was the next map to come, and how would Richtofen stop Samantha Max and the Maxis? And then so, naturally, we're gonna go to the next map. The final map in Black Ops 1. And it was a map that changed zombies forever. Moon. And finally, we made it here, to Moon. The last map in Black Ops 1. And it continues with the same style of the comic book style. With the loading screen. To see to the right of it, a temple lands on the moon. And apparently there's astronauts in there, and they're drilling around it. And to us before, it looked like the Shangri-La temple. And to the left, we see a lot of advertisements of all the weapons we used in zombies. And the stuff we gathered along the way, like with the golden rog, as it's called the V device. Back then, this perplexed a lot of theories, because what was it doing here? Why were the items listed and had prices on them? It was just weird, and plus there's little easter in some of these advertisements too. But back to the right, because apparently there's a moon base on the moon. We have to get to there, because as soon as we start, we're in Groom Lake, Area 51. And for the first time, there's no rounds, because we have to go to the teleporter and wait for it to open. As basically, this is no man's land. The zombies keep infinitely spawning, and they get more pissed off the more you stay here. And more of them spawn, and then hellhounds spawn too. And then so, surviving for a couple seconds, we go to the moon. 
This is one of the most coolest moments in Zombies history, as we're finally on another planet. And even too, the environment reflects on it as the gravity's low, everything doesn't sound that well, because we're in space, as it's a vacuum tube, and there's hardly sound could travel in space. And then so, this map was really cool. It was really unique, more unique than Shangri La. Because now we're on Griffin Station. And it certainly keeps the tradition of the zombies' appearance reflecting on the map. Some of them have spacesuits on them too. And we're forced to wear a spacesuit because we'll die of a lack of oxygen, the PEZ equipment. This was a really cool mechanic on this map. Makes us feel like we're on the actual moon. For everything with the gravity messing up and the lack of sound and even we have to wear the spacesuit. It really immerses us on the moon. And just like with the rest of the other maps, this is an abandoned outpost again. But there's no blood or anything, it's very barren, so it seems that something weird happened on this moon base. And they're very extensive with the research as there's a biodome here. There's something else important down here too, because if you go to the power room, there's a pyramid. It seems like to be the one like from the loading screen. What's it doing here? And what is it used for? And we'll be answered to all of that in the easter egg. But before that, who created the Griffin Station? Was it the Americans or was it a different group altogether? And to that, they will be answered in the radios. There's two radios. There's the radio reels and then the regular radios when you find around the map. And then we're going to explore both of them before we get into the easter egg. And just like with the other maps, I'll have them time so you can skip them and we get go straight into the easter egg. So let's start with a couple of them. Log entry 38. Date. December 4, 1939. The matter transference prototype is prepared for test run number 151. We have now reduced our test subject's mass to prove that this is possible. Dr. Schuster, please give an overview. Yes, Dr. Richthofen. We have the new test subject, a walnut, weighing in at 10 grams. The target platform is now at 3 feet with no obstructions. We have one microgram of the element which, according to our calculations, will be entirely used up during test. Excellent, Dr. Schuster. Commence test number 151. Yes, Doctor. Uh, please, insert your earplugs. Good God! We've done it! We have powered up the prototype and have moved a walnut directly from the prototype device into the receiving device. It moved instantly. It, it teleported. Get me Dr. Maxis immediately. But this is not the crucial experiment that you are supposed to be working on. With all due respect, Dr. Maxis, this is a breakthrough of unimaginable proportions. What? That you moved a wall not a few feet? Yes, Edward. We will improve the human condition by revolutionizing the walnut industry. I can see it now. Edward's walnut delivery. Don't be obtuse. How dare you call me that? We are at war, Edward. I will admit that there is promise here. But until this war is won... Correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Maxis. But Group 935 is a research organization. What was the motto? To improve the human condition? What business of ours is this war? Fine, Dr. Richthofen. I will let you in on a little administrative secret. We are finalizing a deal with the Nazi party. We need funding. We need equipment. They need new weapons. Chances are this war will end soon with a treaty or two, and we will be in a much better position to help the world. Are you certain this won't cause massive defections? We have scientists from all over the world working with us. That is why it is with the utmost confidence that I share this with you. No one will know of this. This is simply the breaking of an egg to make an omelette. Think of the tactical advantage we would have. Think of the cost. Think of the time. We can provide the Nazis technical expertise in various areas without putting all our eggs in your walnut basket. Good day, Edward, and get back to your real work. I think Dr. Maxis has lost his perspective. No matter. We'll do this on our own and publish the findings before he has a chance to. You're not suggesting that Dr. Maxis would steal this technology and perfect it without us, are you? I would by no means discourage that thought. Great scientists must stick together and achieve great science. Entry 42. Date, January 4, 1940. Dr. Schuster and I 
despite mounting pressure from Dr. Maxis, have continued working on the matter transference prototype. We have made great strides in the last 30 days and are ready for our first human subject. If our calculations are correct, we will send a test subject, me, to the receptacle station sitting 30 yards away and behind a cinder block wall. Are you certain you want to do this, Dr. Lichtofen? Nein, Dr. Schuster. But this must be done. Quickly, put in your earplugs and power up the machine. we get the voice of Richtofen again, but for some reason he's acting different. He's normal, he's sane, he's not insane like the other radios. And it seems like he was the one that tested with the teleporters. But I guess this is where the small resentment went with Dr. Maxis as Dr. Maxis didn't really like these experiments. But with the third radio, he finds something as he uses the teleporter on himself and he teleports to the moon. For someone else entirely because he finds the same pyramid structure like the one we see in the power room. And the weird thing is that the pyramid is whispering to him. As he thinks that Dr. Shusa went with him, but he's by himself. And then he teleports again to Shangri-La. But the thing is with the other three extra audio logs, something happens to him. Log entry 43. Date, January 23rd, 1940. I cannot be certain what happened to Dr. Richthofen once the test was commenced. He just disappeared from the machine into thin air. I have searched the area for days and have no evidence that he is anywhere. I am afraid I might have to scrap the in- Not scrap anything. We've done something. Something wondrous. Shh! Do you hear them? Dr. Richthofen, you're alive. I'm more than alive, Mr. Schuster. Is the device still intact? Yes, but what happened to you? Ah, oh, something wonderful. That chamber was incredible. The wonders we can learn. What are you talking about? Are you all right? Get in the matter transference prototype, Dr. Schuster. We have worked. <laughs> Gentlemen, for two long years we have toiled here and at Eagle's Nest to build our fortifications. For two long years we have taken equipment to build up our labs. For two long years, we have worked under Group 935, believing that Dr. Maxis truly wants to help the world. For two long years, we've led a double life. Today, that all ends. I bring to you what this project is all about. What I have worked to keep from my enemy. What is it, Dr. Richtofen? It looks alien. 
It is an ancient drill machine. And you, Dr. Groff, are now the lead scientist here at Griffin Station. You will be the one to discover how it works. We first must discover what it does. Nein, Dr. Groff. I know what it does. It has a direct connection to another dimension. Let us see. Preposterous. No more preposterous than teleporting all of this gear to the moon and building Griffin Station. Is it? I suppose not. How do you know what it does? I have found many interesting real artifacts here. I have decoded some of their language. All signs point to this device being a stable gateway to the ether. Dr. Richthofen. I'm aware of a project being run by Dr. Maxis at Doris concerning Brill. As am I. I am going back to my post at Group 935 to continue the charade. I will be finding out just how much information Dr. Maxis has on Brill. Once the machine is operational, I will enact my plan on return. Gentlemen, let the games begin. So now we know why Richthofen is crazy. He got corrupted by the pyramid. And now he wants to unlock the potential it has. As he dedicates two years to building Griffin Station on the moon to continue experiments on the pyramid. As he uses the Illuminati's resources to create Griffin Station. And also too he figures out the pyramid leads to another dimension. The Aether. And so he wants to unlock this dimension for himself for personal gain. As the whispers keep talking to him no matter what. And we get to explore some of the experiments they did on Griffin Station with the audio reels. And we're going to explore three of them. Mr. Log, 1075. Dr. Schuster and I have spent countless hours with the pyramid device in an attempt to understand how it functions. We have made little progress until now. Today, we uncovered what looks to be some kind of tank with a glass-like front. The glass itself seems... I've got you now, rat! Kill it, Schuster! Did you see that? Look! The capacitor is illuminated. The tank is filling the machine. It seems to be activated. What did you do? I think we just discovered what powers this machine. This is Eagle's Nest. Status update. Over. Hello, Doctor. We have the shipment and are carrying out your orders. <laughs> All in the name of science, Dr. Graf. Continue until the tanks are full. Yes, Doctor. May God have mercy on us all. Eagle's Nest, this is Griffin Station. We have an update. Over. Dr. Graf, have you made any progress? Yes, Doctor. The machine is ready and awaiting the conduit. <laughs> Very good. I will proceed with Operation Shield. We'll join you shortly. Security Protocol 935. Yes. I will dispose of Dr. Maxis and that little brat personally. Do not touch anything. And so they figure out the pyramid uses souls to power itself. As they kill a rat nearby it and they get more bodies to further power the device. With all of this, it seems like an eldritch horror. We're not supposed to be messing with this. It's like it corrupts your mind. But yet, Dr. Edward Wirtoffen doesn't care. He wants to get the power no matter what. And with the last audio log, he says that he will kill Dr. Maxis and Samantha Maxis too. Even the other researchers find it disturbing that what Dr. Richthofen is doing. But they still carry out his orders no matter what. And then so, with the next three audio reveals, we get to re be revealed of what is controlling the zombies and what happened to Samantha Maxis. As we finally got the truth now. Mr. Schuster, report. The tanks are full and the shields are down. The machine is humming nicely. Good. And what of the shipment? Most are buried outside of the base. The live ones we've sent back to Kustva Postum. Excellent. There is nothing left but to wait for Dr. Richthofen's return. Perhaps this is a good time to work on my low-gravity putting in the biodome. Yes. A little leisure time would. Intruder detected. Receiving bay. This is not a Security. Report. This is not a Can you repeat? She's coming right toward the... Get back here! Nay! Do not let her! Damn it! Dr. Schuster, find a way to get her out of the pyramid. I will contact Ed and let him know there has been an incident. How did she end up there? No matter. I know what must be done. In the meantime, see if you can find... 
find Dr. Max. Perhaps he can talk some sense into her. Did you not deal with him already? Yes. But if the child is up there, then Maxis must be somewhere too. Find him. How do you propose? Dr. Groth, I cannot do everything for you. I leave this in your capable hands. There is much to be done. Yes, Doctor. Oh, and Groth? Yes. I keep an eye out for an evil-looking dog while you're at it. I hope this works. Schuster, power it up. System manual. Accessing the device. Interface via MTD active. Accessing MTD. MTD integrity check. Nominal. Awaiting input. Excellent. Bring the sample. Analyzing MTD. Creating profile. Profile created. Excellent. Now, scan for target. Yes, Doctor. Located. Bring him here. Immediately. Greetings, Dr. Maxis. Schuster, I should have known. Where is that rat, Edward? Where are we? And how did you get me out of that wretched... None of that is important right now. Allow me to fill you in. Samantha, honey, daddy is here. Come, dear, please, open the machine. Daddy will not let them hurt you anymore. Honey, daddy knows he's made some mistakes. I am truly sorry that you were put through so much. When your mother died, I could not bear the thought of losing you, too. That's why I kept you so close. I did not mean to neglect you. I just wanted to know you were safe from harm. Daddy! I love you, Samantha. I love you too, Daddy. Can you do something for me? Something very important. Yes. Kill them. And so we figure out what happens to Samantha Maxis and why she turned evil. It was the fault of Dr. Richthofen. It was all his fault. He started everything. Samantha Maxis is transferred to the MPD, the pyramid device that controls the zombies and everything. And the last thing before Samantha Maxis goes crazy from the power from the pyramid device, it's a request from her father to kill everyone on the Griffin station. And so begins Samantha Maxis' revenge quest to kill Richthofen and kill anyone who helps him out no matter what. And it doesn't matter if innocent people are caught in the crossfire. All she matters is killing the people who helped Richthofen and Richthofen's death. So we get a tragic backstory for Samantha Maxis, the villain. In actuality, she's not really a villain. She's a tragic one. The only villain to the point in this story was Richthofen. As he went mad with power wanting to unlock the secrets of the MPD, the pyramid device. The result of the easter eggs were fetch quests to help Richthofen stop Samantha Maxis. In doing so, we're going to start with the first steps of the moon easter egg. So with these easter egg steps, I'm gonna go to rapid fire because I think this video is already being too long. So after playing Samantha's game, which is just Simon Says, Griffin Station begins to activate more. After doing this step, after waiting for Excavation 6 for the tunnel to be digged so a ball can come out, it goes to the pyramid. And then we need to fill it with souls. And those souls we can use is the zombies. Which is another terrifying thought because that means the zombie souls are alive. The people are aware that they're dead and it's really a messed up thought. But after all that's been done, something gets revealed to us that totally took Zombies players by surprise. Hello, Samantha, you little brat. Your time is coming. Soon. <laughs> so soon! After the pyramid is finally fulfilled with the souls, Samantha Maxis is revealed to us. This was a massive surprise for the zombies community during the time this map came out. And oh boy, we're not even done yet. Well, there's still more stuff to come that totally took zombie players by surprise. And so we still have to continue the easter egg as Rigtofen set out the goal to stop Samantha Maxis once and for all. 
and he has already the stuff he needs to defeat her. After charging up the golden rock device and filling the pyramid again, <laughs> this happens. <laughs> So Richthofen betrays us all as he swaps places with Samantha Maxis with his soul and now he is in control of the zombies. And the zombies eyes color changed too as now they have blue eyes now instead of the yellow one eyes like Samantha Maxis has. Richthofen has full control of the zombies and he wants to kill everyone but he wants to make it a game. But Dr. Max has figured this out and he has a contingency plan of what to do with Richthofen in the event of the MPD device being taken over by him. And so the easter egg steps continues as we have to figure out how the way to stop Richthofen's full control of the zombies. So after everything we have to do one last step. And after finishing this step something happens that will change zombies forever in history. <laughs> So in order to stop Richthofen's full control of the zombies, Max's contingency plan was to blow up the earth in three specific areas. But the thing is, he's doomed the world now because the rockets were filled with element 115. So the whole world is contaminated with it. And it ensures a full on zombie apocalypse now over the earth. As before, these were small outbreaks now, but now it's on a full global scale. The plan didn't work. Richthofen still has control over the zombies. All we just did was doom the world. This whole thing took everyone by surprise. Nobody was expecting this. We thought it was going to be a small explosion, but no, it left a hole inside the earth and forever contaminated the earth with element 115. And forever, Richthofen has full control of the zombies. And so begins the zombie apocalypse on earth. This was the first massive jump in the zombie storyline now. As many players like me didn't think zombies was going to continue at all. Because the world is doomed and how are characters going to go back and save the world? It's already too late. They already screwed up so much. And no matter what we do we'll be all hopeless because the earth is forever damaged as it has a massive hole in it now which forever messes up with the core and the rotation of it. So all of us naturally thought this was the end of zombies. We doom the world and it's all our fault as we've been used by Richthofen and by Maxis. And so brings the end of Black Ops 1 Zombies. It went out with a bang. Metaphorically and figuratively. So that's the end of the moon easter egg. One of the best rememberable easter eggs out of all zombies history. As everyone thought this was the last journey of the original main crew. And to me personally I didn't think zombies were going to continue after this. And with this easter egg it led an explosive boom to the zombies community. As it brought new fans and made zombies more popular than the way it was from back then. So many theories ended and started again with this map. Because we still didn't get answered over Gartha. We know what the Aether was because Richthofen was in it and so was Samantha Maxis. But we still had unanswered questions. And all of that wouldn't have been answered in the next Treyarch games. But with the only standard release of Black Ops 1, we had no clue what was in store for us. As we thought, again, it ended. It just ended with a bang and that was it. And then so, Moon is one of the most memorable maps in COD history due to the easter egg. And it was one of the most complex ones as for me it took a long time to get all the items I need to in order to complete the steps. But I had a lot of fun time doing them. Although I almost kind of broke my mind because I did this late in the night like at 5 in the morning to get the footage. But anyways, that was Moon. The last chapter or so we thought in Zombies history. So that was all the Zombies maps on Black Ops 1. If you want to see the original maps, go check out my World of War video as I explored those maps too with that one. Holy crap, this was a long video. I didn't think it was going to take that long, but it did. And I had a lot of fun doing the footage and editing and scripting it and voice recording too. It was a lot of fun to do this. It brought a lot of fun memories doing this as it reminded me of some of the old YouTube videos I used to watch because I didn't have enough friends to do the Easter eggs, so I had to watch other YouTubers do them and even talk about the lore too. And also, if you made it this far, 
thank you. This was my longest video yet, and I think the next one for Black Ops 2 will be the longest too. So that one's gonna take a massive while to do. And also, if you made it this far, like, comment, and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. I did a lot of work for this video too, and I'm still learning as I go. So there might be small mistakes in this video. So I, I hate to say it because I'm not that type of YouTuber, but I would appreciate it if you like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And even share it with some of your friends too. And again, I would like to say, I appreciate all your guys' support. If all the comments and everything and the likes too. It really helps me out with some of these doing these videos. And it will especially help me out doing more long form videos like this one. I think I might not promise on this, but Black Ops 2 will be longer than Black Ops 1. And so Black Ops 2 will be the final trilogy of me talking about what made zombies terrifying. The old type of zombies. So like with this one, this was a sequel to the War at War video. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out if you've stumbled across this video. I think I'll have it linked at the end with the end card, so you could check it out over there. But I think I already yapped too much on this video, so hope I hope you guys have a nice day and also a great day too. Whatever works. I hope you guys really appreciate this video. Well, this is Mazer Argo signing out. See you on the next video. And especially, I will be waiting for you guys to watch Black Ops 2 when it comes out. See you guys later.